I'm here at Band Beach. The name Band is actually the allied code name for one of the landing beaches during D-Day, which today is actually the sixth landing beach that is mostly unknown by most people. Here you can find one of the most impressive fortifications in the D-Day landing sector in Normandy named Doyen 05 Frenchville West, and I'm going to have a look at this position today. The band sector was located between the Orn and the Dives, east of Sword Beach. The sector was initially designated for Operation Overlord, but the plan was abandoned during planning and units of the British 6th Airborne Division were dropped into the area instead. Most well known targets for the British 6th Airborne Division would have been the Merville Battery and the bridges over the Orn and the Conn Channel, most famous is of course the Pegasus Bridge. One of the biggest fortifications can actually be found here, named WN5 or Stukspunt 05 Frenchville West. One notable thing about this German fortification is that it was located 150 meters behind the beach in the dunes. The complex was intended to stop a possible breakthrough of armored vehicles. Stukspunt 05 included a large R504 and R-506 anti-tank bunkers, which were armed with two 47mm Skoda 36 guns and an unknown anti-tank gun in an R-669 casemate close to the channel. The position also integrated a 17th century French fort named Redoute de Merville and you can find some French gun positions actually part of the Machinot line to extend the line around the coast, something that was never really finished by the French army. Furthermore, several MG positions can be found, two protecting the rear and sides and an observation post for the battery de Merville. Because a lot of this position is overgrown, it's hard to find certain spots, but to find the OP you can actually follow this anti-tank wall. But spots like the R669 bunker, a later built anti-tank bunker which held an unknown field gun, is pretty hard to get to. And I did not reach it, mainly because it's located inside the swampy, mushy area with a lot of overgrowth. But if I would have known it still had all the crew markings for the gun, I probably would have tried a lot harder. Heading back to the larger R504 casemate, which had a big metal door attached to the front, so the anti-tank gun could be parked inside the bunker when under artillery fire, next to that would have been a crew group shelter. Even though these casemates look impressive, they weren't that effective because you had to move in and out of the bunker to use the anti-tank gun. The R506 bunker had the gun installed inside. Both the anti-flanking wall and two brook section have fallen over in the years, and like you can see these bunkers are the easiest to get to. So today they are used as toilets and gravity punks molest them with their terrible so-called art. What I found surprising is that the MG stand bunker close to the road seems to have been part of a project to give the site some more information. And at one point a stairs would have led you on top of the bunker to more information signs. But it all seems to be abandoned and overgrown. But let's head out to Redoute de Merville. Redoute de Merville was built in 1760 under Louis XVI on the principle of a bonds fortification. This defense work was intended to defend Wisteram and Kordofilzer Orn and to block access to the Bay of the Orn during the Second Hundred Year War with the British Empire. The fort would consist out of a officer quarters, a guardhouse for 30 men, including 6 gunners for the service of a battery of two 24 pounder guns and a mortar. The fortification had to fight its fiercest battles during the Revolutionary War and the Empire Wars and during this time it was put under heavy naval fire. The fort would be largely abandoned in 1815 but would still serve as a custom post. During the German occupation in 1940 the fort was more or less abandoned for over a century, but like many other 17th century forts on the Atlantic Wall, it would be reused by the Germans and received its fair share of new concrete upgrades. It's not known to me what happened during the Battle of Normandy, and it seems that the Germans just abandoned the position. 
Since then the fort has been completely deserted. It was shortly used as a demining warehouse and then abandoned for 40 years until 1983. It was restored by the local government and is now an historic monument. And it's not known to me if this actually counts for the outside fortifications. Since March 7, 1992, more restoration started and the plan was to convert the fort into a museum. Also work was done to make signs outside for some more information on the site, but like I pointed out that seems to have been abandoned, but the work on the fort is still going on. But I doubt this location will ever be a complete museum, since it's just too large of an area. But maybe it will be made more accessible? But until then, if you like to venture into these lands, you will see some of the best preserved D-Day fortifications out there. Hope you enjoyed this video, I will see you in the next one.